Hey, good morning, guys. <clears throat> I had to upload a video. I picked up another anvil today. Yesterday, rather. The one in the back here. Uh, this is the one that I got for 40 bucks uh, a month or so ago. Uh, this one here I got for forty dollars as well, and it's been around the block. It's uh, got some pitting and some uh, casting issues, and uh, uh, there's some issues with the metal that I may or may not address. But uh, this is a bigger vise. Uh, it's about twenty-five inches. Pardon, pardon me. I'm pulling up this tape measure here. Uh, so from the back. To the horn, it's just over 25 inches, so it's a uh, uh, huge. I mean, don't get me wrong, they come bigger, but uh, good deal. 40 bucks. There's the bench grinder for a little size comparison, <laughs> or I'm sorry, the uh, angle grinder. Uh, so I can't see any maker marks, it's older. Uh, you know, I did a little cleanup with the wire wheel just, just quickly. Uh, the game plan is to, one of these I'm going to dress up and, and paint and resurface, the other one I'm going to keep in use, so uh, I'll probably uh, clean up the bigger one, but what a nice piece. It's just super long, I mean, really. Look at that. 40 bucks, you can't go wrong. Now the seller had uh, originally uh, messaged me on this about a month and a half ago, and you know, I offered him 30, he said 40, I said sure. Uh, he lives about two miles away from the house here. And uh, something happened with him, he flaked off and I figured, uh, I always figured that he sold it elsewhere and got more money and, uh, you know, I couldn't blame him. So, uh, yesterday on the, my way to work, I got a text and it said, uh, hey, I still got the uh, anvil and uh 40 bucks and if you want it it's yours and i said uh sure i said i'm on my way to work i can grab it in the morning uh what's your availability and he said well i'll be in and out all day but uh the, the anvil's in the front yard and here's the address and just put the 40 bucks under the doormat so i couldn't wait i didn't want to miss out on the sale or the, or the purchase so uh i sent someone over there with the money to uh secure it and they they went and picked it up and uh so I, I finally got it after all. It's funny how, you know, the universe works, but, uh, you know, must have been meant to be. So uh, so I paid 40 for each of the anvils, and they're both pretty good size, over 100 pounds each. Um, not a bad deal at all. Uh, he, this seller actually has a, a heavy-duty steel cart that the anvil was on. And I would have, if I would have known he was selling it and for how much, I would have bought that too. But it's a, it's a, a steel cart, flat cart, on heavy duty casters, and it's got a bar that you you know a, a curved bar, kind of a handle type deal. And he wants ten bucks for it, so uh, the anvil was on it. And uh, I, how I found out about the the cart was that I saw I was on my break at work, and I'm looking at Craigslist and the tool section, and I see the cart, and the anvil's on the cart. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, and I got a better perspective of the actual size of it from that Craigslist ad because he had it on the flat card and it just looked mammoth on that car. I mean, it just, just looked huge. So uh, I, I was texting with this guy back and forth there. I had his number already, so I shot him a text last night and said, hey, I'll take that cart if it's still available, let me know. And uh, I'm still waiting on a response. It's about 7 in the morning right now. Uh, I worked until 6, so I've been working all night. But uh, got home, had a bowl of cereal, came right out, cleaned this anvil up. Kind of excited about it, so. I got a baby, uh, a baby six pound anvil in the house too. I'll probably end up bringing that out and just having the three of them kind of displayed. Uh, I gotta make some space, but uh, nice piece. Really happy with it, 40 bucks. So. I'll show you what else is going on here. I started work on the uh, Craftsman vise. Uh, this vise, 391-5180. It's got the three and a half inch jaws, and this is uh, made in Japan. But this is an older vise, and I did a little uh, reading online about it. 
and 33, whatever that means. I did a little reading online and people are writing and raving about it, saying it's a good vice. It's kind of, you know, it's smaller, but it, I guess it's uh, pretty tough. Uh, everything is in good shape. These uh, handles are, are super straight. No, no bends at all. Not even the slightest bend on either of them. So, uh, yeah, everything's good on the hardware. Uh, all this needs, see the, that's in great shape. All this needs is some uh, jaw work. The owner had these huge, these got to be nine inches, you know. I, like I said, I thought these were, uh, I thought he had a piece of steel clamped up in the vise in the ad because it just looked like this. And I was like, eh, it's weird. But, uh, you know, the, the only purpose this would have would be to uh, clamp something up that, you know, what, you could hang it and it wouldn't interfere with the actual vise. But uh, I don't like it. And I'm going to trim these down. And uh, grind the edges smooth and clean them up a little bit. And uh, I got to find two bolts, uh, actually four, so they all match. But uh, each jaw came with one bolt missing, so I got to find four bolts. But uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I got the wall of hardware, and uh, I've made a point to always keep hardware and never throw it away, whether it's in a tool lot or. Uh, you know, and something that I've taken apart or, you know, I, I keep the hardware because it saved me more than a couple times of having to go to Home Depot and spending, you know, hardware is not cheap. And uh, so, got to get some bolts in the old jaws and that'll be a wrap. I'll, I'll, I'm going to paint that Craftsman red and uh, call it a day and put it with the vice stash. And while we're on the topic of vices I'll show you uh, some of the other ones I have here and I, I know I've showed them before but let's have a look this little one here is a uh, read read 203 it's got uh, fixed fixed jaws are not removable I like that uh, this little piece here it's nice they didn't have to go to that measure, but this is in good shape. This is 30 bucks. I got it at a flea market. Uh, it was spray painted uh, metallic blue, and it was just like the most god awful paint job. I mean, it, this it came on a piece of wood. It was like a piece of particle wood, a square of it, and there was two uh, big lug screws mounting it to the wood, and then the whole thing was painted. He painted the wood. I mean, it was overspray. It wasn't like he even painted the whole piece of wood, but it was overspray, terrible blue. Uh, everything was painted blue. The the hardware, uh, everything, the handles. It, it was crazy. So the first thing I did is took it apart and cleaned it up. So I don't know why people do that. They paint every single piece on the vice. You know, it's like obviously there's some parts that you're not meant to paint. The metal on metal moving parts and whatnot. You know, I I, I mean this was blue and everything. So anyways. Got another reed uh, back here. This is uh, got a little bit of a different. That's kind of cool too. But uh, this is a reed 104, four-inch jaws. Nice little vise. Uh, this is uh, this little guy's uh, Desmond Simplex 350, and I got this at a garage sale. It was. Uh, Paid 17 bucks, but I also got some other stuff with it. I forget exactly what, but I, there was an old vintage Craftsman toolbox and uh, some hand tools, uh, but that was cheap either way. But then the one that I, the only one that I had mounted and that I really use right at the moment is uh, the Morgan Chicago 140. Uh, four inch jaws. Uh, it's a little bit of a bigger vise. It's pretty decent. I got this on a trade. Uh, I traded a big snap-on wrench that I got at the flea market a while back. And uh, I forget, what, I think I had less than $5 invested into the wrench because I got a little bit of a package deal there. But uh, yeah, this is the only one I use. So these four are just kind of hanging out. And then I got the big uh, American Scales 160 pounder that needs a little bit more work and then I'll be ready for primer and paint uh, shortly but that's definitely on the list of uh, things I'm gonna be getting done very soon or next <clears throat> I just uh, I got about 
ton of time tied up in this fan. I got it all wrapped up right now. There's a fan under there, believe it or not. Um, I guess I could show you a preview. <clears throat> but uh, the base is... The base is taped off, but it's actually uh, it's a piece of wood that I cut with a jigsaw into a circle, and I sanded real smooth, and I stained it, and then I put gloss over the stain. It's really nice. I wish I could show you. I don't wanna. I'm just kind of preserving it. You know, I did a little touch-up painting on it, but uh, uh, can we get a little shot of it? Yep, yeah, you can just make it out there. It's hard to get, it. but it's really nice. It's got it's got some. You know, some striping in the in the green and everything. Really nice. Came out good. I'm happy with it. But uh, I'll show you the rest here. I just wanted to tape it off. But um, the fan. The only thing I have left to do is put this grill back on it. I got the grill here. And I was going to mount it the other day. But I noticed that there was a couple little spots where the, uh, the primer was showing through. So I, I hit it with a couple more coats. Uh, but other than that, the uh, the entire fan is ready to roll. Uh, it's been painted gloss black. Uh, the original badge is kind of rough, scraped up and scratched, and I couldn't do anything about that. But uh, the blades, like I said, are a metallic silver. Uh, I left a couple of the accent pieces uh, bare metal like that there. This knob here. Uh, this is an oscillating fan. And it's also a three-speed. Uh, you have uh, uh, the first click to the right is high, and then medium and low. Uh, far left is off. And uh, this thing, uh, these are the head wires, and they run from the motor. Uh, underneath this base plate, there is uh, uh, some connections, and you know those are the head wires, and they run to the. Uh, fan speeds and whatnot so I, I've replaced this little uh, wire gasket I replaced the wire uh, replaced the power cord I, I installed this little piece here uh, the old wiring was terrible the head wires originally came in like this little nylon sheathing that looked cheap as you could see that they were braided or not braided but they were twisted and you could actually see the individual wires I didn't like. I didn't care for that, and they were dangerous. A um, uh, couple of the wires, two of them were 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 exposed inside of the uh, motor, and eventually it would have started a fire or something like that, or shorted out. So uh, the girl, the owner, uh, got this from her grandmother, and she was concerned with the wiring, rightfully so. And I'm glad that she decided to uh, reach out and find somebody to do this. Uh, this is an oscillating fan as well, and it didn't oscillate before, but I fixed it. Uh, this is a little bit of a gearbox of sorts. Uh, it was packed with the original grease, which was uh, solidified and, and very hard. And I removed all that, and I packed it full of fresh grease that's much softer. And uh, I have it, I have it to where it oscillates perfectly, and it's really, really kind of cool. So the fan, uh, she doesn't really expect. She doesn't know what she's getting, you know. She uh, she wanted the wiring replaced for safety reasons, and then she said that uh, I didn't directly talk to her. This is a friend of a friend. Uh, my friend uh, who set it up told me that the girl was concerned with the wiring, but said that if there was anything I could do to spiff it up, they go ahead and do it and let her know what I want in terms of money. Uh, but I have, don't think that she quite would expect this caliber of. Uh, I don't think she expected me to repaint the whole thing and everything else, but I, I did, and I did some accent colors. You know, I did the, these black. I did the, the dots in the front black, and uh, just little touches that I thought looked cool. Um, but it's got a heavy-duty cord now, um, proper ground. Uh, the wooden base is screwed down. Uh, down downward from inside of this plate uh, the, the base itself separates from the plate and it's screwed directly into the wood so it's solid and then on the bottom of the wooden base I took uh, I took and you can probably make them out I mounted uh, about five of them I think but they're little rubber uh, feet 
so that this will be a nice uh, rigid. It won't slide around on you, and it you know it's it's solid, and it'll probably uh, dampen any noise too. So the fan the fan's gonna be great. I'll, I'll show you uh, the finished product when I put the grill back on it. But basically, uh, what we have left here is the grill, and then uh, the grill is mounted through the motor bolts, actually and uh, with these nuts, so it's kind of unique. And then the Coupe de Grace will be this little badge on the front that'll finish it all off. I, I know it's gonna kind of set it off and make it look look nice, so I'm excited. Uh, I know she's gonna be happy, so anyways, that's the fan. Uh, I took apart the Craftsman bench grinder that I got with that lot the other day. Uh, it was full of uh, sawdust and you know I wanted to clean it out got a plastic housing but you know it's an old craftsman it's made in USA uh, these are actually Sears craftsman grinding stones and they're like new uh, what's cool about this fan is it has uh, radiating speed um. Is that even a word? I know radiating is a word, but uh, variable speed, I guess, is the word I was looking for. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, I got distracted. Somebody came in the back door there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so the fan's on, and uh, you can... It's a little... <laughs> yeah, this is so, so bootleg. You can adjust the speed with this little... Uh, this little slide here. So that's a slower RPM. And you can just kick it all the way up. So. Sorry about that. That was probably brutal to watch, but. <laughs> This is my phone, and I'm not a good YouTuber, and I'm just doing the best I can. I hope that you can overlook the uh, horrible video quality and absolutely zero editing whatsoever. Uh, anyways, moving right along. Uh, I started to clean up the Simplex jack. You can see the top there. Ball bearing. I'm assuming there's a ball bearing in the top, and that's why this pivots. Simplex ball bearing. Drop forging. Okay, so this is uh, the one by six, and it uh, it says in the bottom "Made in USA" at the top. Uh, the middle portion there it says it, the second word would be registered, I would assume, and then it looks like DES. But anyways, I don't know what that even means. But in any event, this is uh, there's the simplex, and then you have Chicago. This is nice. This uh, threads right out so I got to get the Dremel out and get to the inside and obviously inside the handle I couldn't reach but I got a good start on it anyways just kind of just kind of jumping around on a few things you know several projects opened to open at one time uh, cleaned up uh, this was in good shape already the wizard breaker bar half inch drive uh, Kind of nice. I cleaned up the uh, the Williams was rough. This was definitely rough, but uh, it's decent now. Not done with this part with this piece yet. I'm gonna get inside of that handle there. Clean that up, and then I want to get a little more in in depth there. I already know not to try to get that pin out of there from a Scout Crafter video. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, then we got the uh, floor jack. I'd like to take apart, clean up, and repaint, or at least clean up. I probably, yeah, I probably won't paint it, but uh, this Bridgeport piece. I'm just doing a quick run through with the stuff that I got. Just showing you real quick. Bear with me. Just sit back and enjoy yourself. Uh. Bridgeport 121. Now, this isn't, eh, could be better, I guess, but 
the issue is going to be with these wooden scales here. Now, this part has got kind of a chunk missing, so this would take a lot of work um, for me to make. I can't say that I've ever done that. I've never made wooden handles um, in any sense. But uh, I, I would love to have a set of uh, new grips on this bad boy because the metal I know will clean right up, and this is really uh, this is really a nice piece. Only one I've ever seen in person, anyways. You know, and uh, of course I grabbed it. <sighs> that uh, little I knew there was a reason I grabbed this thing, but this was with that stuff. You know, when I bought the fin and the Dremel tool and all the other crap there, 50 bucks, this was in there. The handle's brass, so you couldn't tell it was really dirty, but it's just a nice little hammer. I keep it hanging up right here. There's another uh, brass one here, and then a, a Cook's lead hammer. This bad boy, this was two bucks at the flea market. I don't think the guy knew what the hell he had. I don't think he knew it was brass because it was uh it was it was dirty. But it comes apart. It's got you know it might be homemade, but it's it's cool. You know it's just bare bones. It's all there. It's not going anywhere. It's got a threaded rod. The nuts come off. The the piece of wood comes off, and then a nice hunk of brass. So those two bucks. I mean, how can you not buy that? But, uh, what else? Yeah, I also want to take apart this black and decker here pretty quick. I don't, you know, I got a whole tray of, uh, Jacob Chuck keys, and I don't have this size. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but I don't want to take alternative measures in loosening that chuck, but I want to get that open and get that piece out of there and probably remove the chuck if I can and clean that up, but, uh, I definitely want to get this drill cleaned up, and that's in the plans. Uh, I like it. I like the style of it. It works. I don't think there's reverse on this, but it's just a, a your your basic drill. But what I like about I like the all steel construction. Definitely, I like the Jacobs Chuck. But the cord, I mean, the power cord is just look at this this uh, uh, what do they call these stress breakers or whatever? That this thing is huge. I mean, that's the size of my thumb. And then the, the gauge cord itself, I mean, this thing, it's huge. What I don't like is the, uh, the ground wire. I don't know what the hell you, what are you supposed to do? But, I mean, just shove that in the socket? Well, I never understood these. So, wish I had a different end on it. So, but anyways, that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more. Thanks.